When Roger Sams awoke one night from uneasy dreams, he found himself on the floor of his shabby apartment above a rundown, dilapidated bar in San Francisco, transformed into a horrible vermin. And that's quite a turn of bad luck, because the embittered entomologist had just managed to embezzle a suitcase full of research money from his former employer when an enchanted family heirloom from his mother cast a spell on him and turned his soul into a cockroach, putting him through a literal Kafkaesque metamorphosis. But one man's junk is another man's, or rather, another insect's treasure. Roger's home is every neat freak's nightmare. It's untidy, grimy, and cluttered with garbage, filth, and dirt all over the place. Yeah, the place is a real shithole. And the paradise for a crawling insect. Yeah, Bat Mojo is that roach game, the notorious cockroach simulator from the mid-90s, that, if you haven't played it yourself, you might just have overheard people talk about it during the early CD-ROM video game era, because it, at the time, certainly turned some heads with its unconventional concept. In this one-of-a-kind adventure game, we explore the world from the eyes of a three-inch tall roach. And exploration is the keyword here. The developer chose to make the game's controls as minimalistic as possible. All you need is four arrow keys to walk, uh, crawl your way across extremely atmospheric and beautifully detailed render backgrounds while solving puzzles and avoiding deadly hazards in the form of common household items around every corner. Bad Mojo feels like the kind of game that emanated from a cute little video game idea brought up in a jovial conversation among friends, but that ended up sparking so much enthusiasm that the developers went all out with it. A concept like playing from the perspective of a tiny insect is so simple and vague that the result depends entirely on the execution. And luckily, Pulse Entertainment gave this peculiar idea all the time, love, and effort that it required to turn the idea of the Roach game into a thoroughly enjoyable, utterly unique, and also technically impressive video game experience. The, at the time, state-of-the-art render backgrounds are bursting with interesting little nuances, details, and fascinating world-building elements that make the scenery feel almost ridiculously lively and organic. The environments have an almost palpable texture, a grit to them that makes Bad Mojo feel like a vast and coherent interactive piece of hyper-realistic art. The way this desolate and dilapidated, trash-littered, filthy and decaying building is depicted from an almost uncomfortably close perspective, somewhat reminiscent of macro photography, imbues this repulsive environment with a strange kind of larger-than-life beauty. Bad Mojo makes the object feel aesthetic. And this theme of life as you know it, only really fucking close, is also what makes the minimalistic gameplay so easily approachable and captivating. The shift in perspective, from 6 feet tall to 3 inch small, is quirky and bemusing in the beginning, but quickly makes the player rethink the way they approach the world and see it with new eyes and feelers. Tiny puddles of spillage and small gaps between surfaces turn into unavoidable obstacles. The other side of a room suddenly feels as far away as the other side of an entire town before. And even though 300 million years of evolution turned your species into an extremely resilient organism, there are still deadly hazards waiting every step of the way. Spiders, rats, gas oven flames, food leftovers and all sorts of sticky goo everywhere and even your own pet cat are all things that can end your life in an instant if you're not vigilant and perceptive enough. But on the bright side, you also get to explore every nook and cranny of your place of residence and see many things from a completely new angle, quite literally. Every crack in the wall becomes an entrance to a hidden compartment, every tabletop and every surface can be walked on from both sides, Seemingly useless junk can be repurposed in many different ways, like turning peanut shells into miniature boats. And quite typical for the common house roach, toilet bowls and sewage pipes become your natural public transportation system between different rooms of the house. It's weirdly satisfying to figure out how to fill up a printer's paper tray to get rid of a pesky roach-eating rat with razor blades to duel a hungry spider to death with a glowing cigarette butt or to trigger a fire alarm when you're only as big as a thumb. 
Since the game is not rendered in real-time 3D, but you explore your surroundings via mostly top-down render backgrounds, it can technically be tricky at times to spot different entrances, scene transitions and paths that stray away from purely two-dimensional screen-to-screen movement. But to the developer's credit, many scenes come with very clever and subtle little hints that telegraph ways of navigating the environment, like other roaches walking into hidden alcoves and crevices that would otherwise be next to impossible to spot. I don't think I've encountered a single instance where it's absolutely unclear where you can and can't go. The only requirement not to get stuck is for the player to really try and think like a tiny insect when it comes to their surrounding. As you might have guessed from the opening of this video, aside from the cockroach simulator at its core, the gameplay is embedded in a somewhat corny, cynical, goofy and also at times surprisingly dark backstory, which is told in a wonderful staple of mid-90s early CD-ROM games. Full motion video. Bad mojo. It was that era when video games wanted to become the new cinema. Seeing C-movie actors deliver hammy performances across your 13-inch CRT screen in tiny, overly compressed frames with 256 colors at max felt like this is the future of gaming. No, don't go! Bad Mojo's acting, there is no way denying it, is incredibly campy sometimes scraping the border of cringe. Man. Yeah, 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 bro! If I don't get my money, I'm gonna come over and do a little dental work on you. Yeah, don't worry, bro, I'll, I'll get the money. I got a sure thing. <laughs> you better head. Michael X. Summers' performance of protagonist Roger Sams often comes across as a discount Jim Carrey. Who is it? Who do you think it is, sweetheart? Your fairy godmother? And some of the lines are delivered with so much ham, the game should be labeled not suitable for vegetarians. I know, Angelina, I know. I drink too much, I smoke too much. Forgive me. I'm just a lonely old man. I can't sleep to save my life. But in all fairness, this is nothing out of the ordinary for games of that time. Some of the most critically acclaimed titles of the FMB era were praised not just despite, but for the occurrence of low-budget C-movie acting performances. Because I can't stress that enough, having real actors in video games was just so incredibly mind-boggling at the time that, well, it made the whole bunch of us a little bit uncritical for a while. Sorry. Bad acting was and will always be inseparably associated with the age of FMV. The next time you want something, don't come crawling to me. And it is kind of lovely, to be honest. Fine! I'll go to the store and get your goddamn drain cleaner. In this context, both Bad Mojo's acting and the production quality of the film sequences were top-notch. The sets feel atmospheric and gritty, the actors radiate a genuine passion for the project, which makes it just a bliss to watch. And now, don't push me, old man! I said you'll get it in the morning! I personally feel that the way Bad Mojo doesn't always take itself super seriously when it's appropriate makes it genuinely charming. I don't freaking believe it. So much so that the game's full motion sequences aged considerably better than other infamous FMV quote unquote blockbusters like Gabriel Knight 2 or Phantasmagoria, for instance. Very interesting. Thanks. And some of the camera flights and seamless transitions between FMV and CGI are honestly still really impressive up to this day. And it shows just how much planning and care has gone into every aspect of the game's production to make everything feel so homogenous in the end. It's this aspect of Bad Mojo in which Pulse Entertainment, usually an animation tools and technology development company, could flex their muscle in producing state-of-the-art CGI and video production work. Bad Mojo feels like solid craftsmanship paired with an obsession for details and a lot of love for the idea. 
The apartment is not just littered with junk, but also with an extensive amount of environmental storytelling. Letters, newspaper clips, and many other intricately placed objects scattered all across the bar and apartment complex add little bits and pieces to the background story of Rudder Sams and a sulky, deprecated landlord, their past, their family histories. Well, you'll never be cold again, baby. I promise you. It's a neat meta puzzle for the observant player to piece this slightly cheesy, slightly spooky, and slightly bittersweet backstory behind the protagonist and his metamorphosis together in their mind. It takes just one look at the credits to see just how much research the makers of the game put into studying the physiology and behavior of cockroaches alone as extensively as possible. Probably to make Bad Mojo the most realistically appalling cockroach simulator of all time. Oh, and speaking of metamorphosis, yeah, the game also isn't exactly subtle with its references to the most obvious work of influence behind it. Franz Kafka's famous novella The Metamorphosis, in which a young man, one morning after uneasy dreams, finds himself transformed into a human-sized insect. The protagonist's name, Roger Sams, is an obvious play on Kafka's Gregor Samsa, and Roger's cat is appropriately named Franz. Hey, Franz. Come here, boy. Come on up and give old Eddie a kiss. Bad Mojo is neither a very long game, nor is it extremely challenging. You'll have it easily finished in under five hours. These days, you can easily get the game's Redux version, released in 2004 by Got Game Entertainment, on GOG.com and Steam. Windows only, though. This remastered version leaves the original game content completely untouched. It only updates it to true color graphics, as opposed to the original 256 color palette. One of the biggest reasons why I'm still, after all these years, fond of this unique twist on the adventure genre is because Bad Mojo is the definition of a true hidden gem, a labor of love through and through. This is not a project that was chaperoned by a greedy publisher constantly beating the developers over the head with target audience metric charts to mangle the final product into a cash cow. Bad Mojo is an obscure little gem that oozes passion and love for an outlandish game idea which captivated the developers so much that they gave it their everything. You can feel this on every single one of the timelessly atmospheric and hyper-detailed render backgrounds. You can hear it in the wonderfully organic and eerie score and sound design by the electro-industrial artist Exorcist. And you can see it in the meticulous technical prowess that went into every aspect of its realization, from the minimalistic but immersive gameplay to the charming full-motion video sequences that blend perfectly into each other and glue everything together. Yes, even the utterly campy acting loudly screams, yes, we had tons of fun making this. This game, both the concept and the way it has been realized by Pulse Entertainment, are so unique and peculiar that I can guarantee you one thing. If you decide to give it a shot, even if you don't end up liking it, it at least will leave a lasting impression on you. Especially if you suffer from entomophobia. But then I wouldn't really recommend it. So I hope that with this video, I could make Bad Mojo a little less of a forgotten gem. Thank you for watching Forgotten Gems. I hope you enjoyed this little excursion into video game oblivion. This game was suggested by a handful of viewers of previous episodes, so if you have a suggestion for a forgotten video game gem that you feel needs to be revisited in this show, let me know in the comment section and add hashtag gem suggestion. These videos take a lot of time and effort to write and produce, so if you would like to help out a little, I truly appreciate your support on Patreon. And you won't do it for nothing. Each backer gets a thank you in the credits of each video, as you see here, Plus, there's a bunch of rewards like monthly live streams and commentary episodes about topics you can vote for and early access to videos. This month, a special thank you goes out to these top tier supporters Arcel Markison, John Boring, Quentin Prodom, Thwagam, Chuck Taylor, Nicolas Sorosa Pooch, Travis Deng, Evan Tekre, Kirista Haku, Adam Burr, Sif57. Cholek, Ariel Guzman, Cole Davis, 
Robin Clausen, Andrei Kriakushin, Abdullah Al Rabia, Jonathan Irwin, Adriel Garcia, Liam Jones, Lucas Murakasardis, James Lynch, Cleish Hie, Garrett Lathy, Vida Daly, Nick Lazelle, Malim, Matt Davis, Yulia, David Nadeau, The Melting Squad, Simon Tjomsland, Sean Quigley, Sean Holiday, Angrim, Roman Wasenmüller, Nathan de Grand, Alex Lake, Carlos Spillari, Siri Agnes Eliasson, Agustin Ortega, Jason Johns, Brand Rupert, Maxwell Brown, Subject Matter Games, Max Herbert, Noelani Telemoni, Brozef Jones, David Zelenak, Karl Jura, Martin Schmidt, Konrad Kutze, Adam Cross, Sonny Mallard, Michael Spina IV, Travis Laniv, Dennis Pfefferkorn, Mr. Burgadon, Matthias Fowler, Rational User, Philip Kirchner, Midorino, Chase Ladner, Pascal Fairling, Milan Vujnovic, Yassin Inat, Sebastian Garcia, Jacob Woodward, Dimitri Pirak, Danny Sendel, Carlos Vega, Marisa Martinez, and Nicholas Stevenson. So until next time, ta-ta.